now coming to an important phenomenon called as class switching class switching now let me draw an antibody molecule okay this time i will take the blue colors okay so we have got the dark blue color and we have got this light blue color i am not drawing di di disulfide uh, bonds uh, they will make the diagram complicated okay now all right let me encircle this part and this part what are these parts the variable part and let me shade them also like this so these are the variable parts and we have got you know the remaining part something like this what is this part this is the constant region now class switching means against the same antigen against the same antigen a different a different antibody class is produced that is you know let's say the antigen let me draw the antigen in golden color antigen is going to bind over here bind over here okay we are not disturbing the antigen binding part so this pink part which i have labeled that is going to be unchanged and let me shade this other part in blue in you know yellow color like this this is the constant part class is determined by what class is determined by the fc uh, by the you know constant part of the heavy chain so class switching is going to occur in this very part the yellow shaded part okay now why do we let's say you know uh, suppose uh, we uh, anybody gets infected with an organism the first class of antibody to be produced is igm antibody now let's say this is a mucosal pathogen in the gut in the gut mucosa pathogen some some bad some you know some dirty food was eaten up by somebody like for example okay let's let me take the example of um let's say uh, you know enterotoxigenic e coli you eat roadside pani puri but the roadside vendor who is selling the pani puri is not observing proper hygiene so the ha you know the the you know the what you are eating along with pani puri is also enterotoxigenic e coli okay now you want lots of iga antibodies in the gut because iga is mucosal antise antiseptic pain but the very first antibody produced as per rule again say infection is igm now iga should be produced because it's a mucosal pathogen so against the same antigen that is against the same bacterium etec now in place of igm we want to produce iga and this transition of um, you know the the class of the antibody from igm to iga is known as class switching the upper or variable part is going to be the same because we are talking about the same antigen all right guys now let me draw the heavy chain this is the heavy chain gene that is you know this is nothing but chromosome 14 and we just learned that the fab part is encoded by whom it is encoded by the v d and j regions so let me draw let's say you know we have got this uh, v d and j okay so guys this is going to be what this is going to be the they are going to encode for the variable region of the antibody molecule and after this we have got what we have got okay i'm falling short of colors okay we have got uh, let's say okay light green dark green and let me take a pink color purple color Okay, let me take yellow color this time. Okay, so what are these? So this is C. This is constant. Uh, this is CM. That is uh, the constant region which is going to encode for IgM antibody. This is CD which is going to encode for IgD. Then this is C, G, C, E, C, A respectively are going to encode for IgG, IgE, IgA antibody. Okay. now guys class switching is going to occur in this part class switching has got nothing to do with the vdj part we are not disturbing vdj part which is going to support which is going to bind to the antigen class switching has got everything to do with the these triangles which i have drawn okay now if we want if we are dealing with the mucosal pathogen so we want more of iga so you know the local lymph nodes will be 
producing a specific kind of cytokine which will direct the class switching towards IgA. So class switching occurs because of cytokines. Who produces cytokines? T cells produce uh, cytokines. All right, and uh, so, uh, you know, class switching is by virtue of the production of different kinds of cytokines being produced by the T cells. And class switching is extremely important to be able to mount a productive or effective immune response because as we have learned, different classes of antibodies have got, you know, different, different uh, capabilities, their own uniqueness. Like uh, if you are dealing with a parasitic infection, the fantastic antibodies against parasites are IgE antibodies, okay, especially against helminths where IgG, IgA or other antibodies will be less effective and you know uh, IgE antibodies um, are extremely extremely important and in uh, parasitic infections eosinophils um, also are going to be recruited and we know that eosinophils have got receptors for the FC part of IgE antibody so if IgE is produced ADCC can occur all of that I have explained while, disc while explaining, explaining the eosinophils uh, part in the cellular components of innate immunity okay so different different antibodies have got their own uniqueness their own everybody has got their own importance okay there's a saying i would i would i just remembered it i really want to say it right now to help you explain the importance of different classes of antibodies uh, and the saying is see uh, sun is also important and uh, a, a tiny lamp is also important it just depends on the situation if there is no electricity then there is complete darkness then only we can realize the importance of a tiny little lamp. A teeny tiny lamp is of so much importance. I mean, its importance cannot be overemphasized when there is complete darkness, no electricity, nothing. And it is night time. So sun also is not going to be there. So like that, we have got different classes of antibodies which are going to play their unique role in different types of infections. Okay. Now, Coming to class switching, for class switching to occur, there are going to be two cuts required. Imagine, you know, uh, these, uh, the cells have got uh, scissors, okay. The cells have got, uh, you know, two scissors. One scissor is going to cut the gene segment at the same place. That is, the first cut is going to be constant. So, let me uh, draw it this, um, you know, this way. Alright, so this is the first cut. The first cut is always going to be constant. It is going to be at this place only. And depending on the concentration or depending on the type of cytokine produced by the T follicular cells. So class switching occurs because of the cytokines being produced by the follicular T cells. Follicular T cells in the secondary lymphoid organs. Okay. So, like for example, now the second cut can be at this place, this place or this place, okay. So, this one, this one and this one. At any of these places, the second cut will be there and where out of these three places depends on the type of cytokine, okay. So, the second cut is decided by the type of cytokines produced by the follicular T helper cell okay follicular T helper cell like for example if interferon gamma is going to be produced by the follicular T helper cell then the first cut is going to be at sorry then the second cut is going to be at this place Okay, so if interferon gamma is being uh, is going to be produced, then now, now to see this very very carefully. Let me encircle this part in silver color. This part which I am encircling in silver color is going to be cut and removed. It is going to be cut and removed. So what am I going to get? Now, let me draw it over here. So what am I going to get? So again, guys, V D V D and J. So V D J. Now, when I when this part is cut and removed, the two the two green triangles, light green and dark green triangle, are going to go away. And right next to the V D J, we are going to have what? We are going to have the this pink triangle, and then this color triangle, and then the yellow triangle. Okay, V D J. Okay, let me use the same colors only. 
okay just to avoid confusion so v i drew with this color and d with this color and j with orange color okay j with orange color okay so what is this antibody this antibody there's a pink triangle represent igg so guys if interferon gamma is being produced by the by the follicular helper t cell then the first cut will be next to the cd segment that is between cd and cg so because uh, you know this uh, triangle is nothing but the cg region because cg is right next to the vdj segment so this time igg antibody is going to be produced similarly if for example if for example uh, you know if uh, the follicular helper t cells produce interleukin 4 then the antibody which is going to be produced is IgE. In that case, the second cut, the second cut will be at this place that is before IgE. So, whatever antibody you want to form, before that the cut should take place. If suppose IgG is supposed to be formed, then before, I mean, before means uh, what? It is nearer to the VDJ region. Okay, so before, before the CG region that is, you know, in this place, which is nearer to the VDJ, the first cut is taking place. I mean, the second cut is taking place. And if the follicular T helper cells are producing interleukin 4, then the second cut is, then IgE should be produced. So, the second cut should be, the second cut should be before the CE region. That is that region which encodes for the constant part of IgE. Ye wala region. Let me highlight it in pink color. This is the second cut. So, it is before CE. Before, matlab, this is nearer to what? This is nearer to the VDJ. And if suppose the follicular T helper cells are producing transforming growth factor beta. This is also cytokine. Transforming growth factor beta. If this cytokine is going to be produced predominantly by the follicular helper T cells, then IgA antibody should be produced. And for producing IgA antibody, the second cut, the second cut in this um, chromosome 14 should be at this uh, place. Now, let me highlight this in blue color. This I am marking. Okay. So, in this diagram, I can say that, you know, to the left of CA. Okay. I think that is more, con that is a better way to, uh, to convey it. So, the second cut should be uh, to the left of that uh, of the triangle what the triangle represents what the constant uh, uh, part uh, the constant region of the gene which is going to encode for that particular antibody okay so the first cut remember let me uh, highlight the first cut in purple color so the first cut is always going to be at this place only at this place only that is right right next to the vdj region and the second cut is going to be to the left of that particular type of antibody class which is supposed to be produced all right 